Hello everyone, so um, it's been a while since my last video, as usual, but this time there is kind of a good reason. I'm currently not working, uh, and I'm also not supposed to really be at the computer because my wrist injury, which I have mentioned a couple times before, has returned. Uh, it's always been there, of course, but uh, I guess you could say I've had a flare-up. I had been feeling light discomfort for a while, but I kind of brushed it off and then uh, the week before my Patreon rewards were supposed to get sent out, I really overworked myself doing the tutorials and making sure everything was perfect. So I, uh, I ended up doing a lot of really long hours and I probably had terrible posture and I didn't have time to work out or really be in activity. And so uh, I kind of didn't feel anything while I was working on everything, but uh, the day after I sent everything out, um, I sat down to work on a commission and I just felt the most intense pain I have felt in my wrist for uh, years. It hasn't been this bad since, uh, since when I got my diagnosis, basically. So basically for the past two weeks I have been unable to work and I probably will be unable to work uh, for a little while longer, um, unfortunately. And um, it is what it is, but uh, I thought I could at least make a video with all this free time I have now. <laughs> um, and um, I mean, this is a subject that I, I guess I'm really passionate about as well because this is something that I have been dealing with for so long and um, I find that like a lot of artists deal with this but I feel like not a lot of us talk about it uh, or there's not a lot of resources on it anyway so I really wanted to like use my platform or whatever to uh, just talk a little bit about it so the ones of you who are already dealing with this uh, maybe don't feel as alone and hopeful hopeless and so and so the ones among you who haven't dealt with this yet um, know what to do to prevent it. But first of all just like a quick rundown of what I'm painting. I made this in October of last year and I had saved this footage kind of for a moment like this where I couldn't produce anything new and I needed to um, use some old content. So this is a painting of a character named Rodina and uh, it was a birthday present for a friend of mine. He really helped me out a lot um, last year so I just wanted to do something nice for him in return. And this took me uh, eight and a half hours. And uh, by the way, I just wanted to like uh, touch on something real quick. I've noticed comments on my latest videos that are like Oh, I can't believe you you're able to draw for 10 hours <laughs> and I just I just really want you all to know when I say I spent 8 or 20 hours on a painting that doesn't mean I sat down and painted for 20 hours without taking a break uh, my paintings usually take me at least a week uh, sometimes they take me four weeks I'm not able to sit down and draw for eight hours straight uh, I don't think anyone is so if you're one of those people who have seen the amount of hours I spend on each painting and that makes you feel bad because you can't focus for that long, do not feel bad because I I take breaks every... Uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about breaks uh, in this video, but I take breaks like every 25 minutes or every 45 minutes. Sometimes I, I'm able to work for like two hours without, without a break, but that's rare and that's also really bad for your wrists. So just like for full transparency, this painting took me eight and a half hours, but that was over the course of like four days, I think. So yeah, uh, with that being said, let us talk more about wrist pain. So this video is not going to be very structured. I'm just kind of going to uh, talk about my experience first and then uh, talk a bit about the things that have worked for me and the things that haven't work, worked for me. Um, I'm going to try to edit this kind of minimally and uh, keep it as kind of a podcasty video. So um, yeah, just like draw, draw along and listen if you want to, if you feel like this video is way too long. I guess I just kind of have a lot to say about this. 
So I got my diagnosis for what my doctor thought was wrist tendonitis in the fall of 2014. And at this point I was 16 years old and I wasn't even working as a professional artist. So so I want to talk a bit about the background uh, of how I was able to get this sort of an injury being that young and uh, not even working in a high pressure professional job. Because the thing about wrist pain and wrist injuries is that basically in most cases wrist tendonitis, uh, carpal tunnel, tennis elbow, whatever your personal diagnosis is, it's something you get by straining and overworking your arm for a very long time. And it's something that kind of creeps up on you and you get it gradually. So for me, what happened was that it had been creeping up on me slowly for years. And then I had like a brief period of really overworking myself and that was what pushed me over the edge. So I had been noticing um, pain in my wrist since I was uh, 13 or 14. Uh, I started drawing digitally at a pretty young age because I inherited my uh, uh, my sister's old tablet. It was like the first Wacom model ever and it had... The, the drawing surface was like smaller than an iPhone. Um, it was super tiny. So I think as a combination of using such a small tablet and uh, just drawing for like long periods of time without breaks, uh, I'm very obsessive and so, uh, especially when I was younger, if I was having fun with the drawing, I would just get sucked in and forget about everything else for a few hours. And then I would like snap out of it and notice that uh, my hand was really hurting, but I didn't really think much of it because I had no idea wrist tendonitis was a thing. Uh, so I just kind of kept going. And this like pain or I guess I would call it discomfort. Uh, it wasn't really like a really bad uh, acute pain. It was more just like a tightness in my hand and in my wrist. This continued on for for years until I got my actual diagnosis. And even though I was watching a lot of art videos, listening to art podcasts, listening to interviews from a lot of professional artists, no one ever said anything about wrist pain and uh, what it can lead to and how to prevent it. So I didn't think anything of it until this one week in high school where we were having this... Um, I basically went to not an art high school. It's kind of hard to explain, but in Norway we have this school system where high school or 11th, 12th and the 13th grade, you get to pick your own, like, I guess you could call it... Uh, no, actually, I have no idea what to call it. I don't think you have a... A word for it in uh, English but maybe you do and I'm just uh, unaware but you basically get to pick what sort of courses you want to have you can either go like normal subjects with like maths and English and science and uh, society studies you know all the the normal things I guess uh, or you can go like a specialized uh, nursing uh, line or you can go the mechanic line you, you can basically just choose from anything and then that will help you uh, study or get work later. So uh, the line I chose was the regular studies with art classes on top of it. So we had all the regular stuff and then an additional five hours a week of art and architecture. And um, I still like to call myself self-taught because the teachers were not great and we basically just did a lot of random projects and we didn't learn to draw and we didn't... You know, it was high school art educa education. It wasn't anything of note, basically. Uh, but this one... Uh, we had this one project in the second grade where we were doing this, like, inked poster inspired by uh, some old Norse uh, architectural style. And um, we could only use pen and uh, we weren't allowed to like do soft shading or anything, just like a black pen. And I wanted my background to be gray. So I figured I would just dot the entire background, basically making uh, tiny, tiny dots so that from far away it looked gray. And I decided I would do this like three days before the deadline. And this was a huge piece of paper. So I just sat there making these tiny dots 
for like hours and hours and hours trying to make the deadline and this was the first time I really felt my wrist hurting while I was trying. Like it really, really hurt, but I felt like I had to make the deadline because uh, grades were important to me and having a good record with the teachers was important to me. I didn't want to be late and I wanted to make sure it was finished and that it looked the way I wanted it to look so I could get a good grade, basically. So I just kept pushing and I didn't like think I was doing anything harmful to myself. I just thought, okay, it's painful right now, but once I'm finished, it's going to be fine. But the pain just kind of stayed there. Even though I wasn't doing anything after I had finished it, uh, it just stayed there for days, this like intense, acute pain. So I decided to go to the doctor after a few days and he basically told me pretty quickly that I think this is wrist tendonitis. And uh, what that is, is basically in layman's terms, you the tendons in your forearm get strained and overworked and so they can swell up and be painful and you know, it's just painful because your tendons are strained. <laughs> and so what he told me was that I needed to go two weeks without drawing, without using the computer, without writing, without doing anything with my hands. And he gave me uh, these pills. I can't remember like what type of medicine it was, but probably some sort of anti-inflammatory. Because yeah, uh, wrist tendonitis is an inflammation of your tendons. That's the word I was looking for. So he told me, uh, take these pills, take a break, and you're gonna be fine. It's gonna be cured. <laughs> and so, I went two weeks without drawing, without doing anything. I remember I had this math test like the day after and I had to write the entire thing with my left hand. And it was really scary, but I thought it was going to be fine. So I kind of didn't stress that much. I was convinced that this was just a temporary problem because that's what my doctor had told me. And um, you know, you should trust your doctor, right? So. Um, the two weeks passed and I had taken all the medicine too uh, and the pain just was still there. It was a little bit better, uh, like it wasn't as much of a like throbbing pain, uh, but it was still there. Uh, very notab noticeably so, especially when I picked up a pencil or, you know, did anything with my hand. It was really noticeable. Uh, so I went back to the doctor, he told me okay, uh, this is weird, but I'm going to refer you to the specialist and I'm also going to refer you to a physiotherapist and you're also going to go take a an MR scan. I'm not sure if it's called an MR scan in English. Honestly, I'm not going to bother looking it up, but uh, <laughs> what it was was... Um, it's, the, it's the thing where they... Uh, take you into like a tube and they take pictures of the inside of your body. So I think that was like the first thing I did. There was long waiting periods for all of these things. So he told me to just sit tight, not use my arm and wait for these appointments. So we took the MR and uh, they basically didn't see anything. They took pictures of both my shoulder and my entire arm. Uh, and they said nothing showed up, which is weird because if you have carpal tunnel or, you know, if your tendons are in knots or there's something really wrong, it's going to show up. But they didn't see anything uh, and they didn't really know what to make of it. So they were like, oh, maybe it's like a muscular thing. We don't know. So that was really frustrating because I still had this pain and now no one really knew what it was. So then I started seeing the physiotherapist that my uh, doctor had referred me to and um, he did this like heat treatment on my arm. He like massaged the muscles with this really warm orb thing, which hurt like a motherfucker and it didn't really help. Uh, he also told me to do some exercises. Those didn't really help either. And then, like, while I was going to him, uh, I also had my specialist appointment. Uh, and this was a specialist in, like, uh, in basically forearm injuries and uh, strain injuries. And what he told me was, I can't see anything physically in your arm. So I don't know if this is wrist tendonitis or tennis elbow or carpal tunnel. Uh, all I know is that I can't see anything physically wrong with you. So his conclusion was that this was probably a psychosomatic issue, which is basically where 
initially there's nothing physically wrong with you, but then your brain uh, sends signals that uh, cause you to have an issue. So what that means is that he thinks uh, there was nothing initially wrong with me, but then I started having um, anxiety about drawing and I started having anxiety about not being able to draw. And so that really stressed me out. And so my brain started sending signals to my arm, uh, which caused the muscles to just be really tense at all times, which then caused the pain. And he said that um, the treatment for this was like really comprehensive and that it took like a long time to finish the treatment uh, and that it was really expensive too. So he just uh, told me to relax and he just didn't want to refer me anywhere. So he basically told me like, it's all in your head, uh, go deal with it by... Which was really disheartening because this was, this was like, uh, I had been waiting for this for like months because there had been a pretty large wait list. There usually is for like specialists. Uh, and so just to just be told that he didn't know what the issue was or that the issue was just in my mind and that there was nothing to do about it was like really the thing that broke me kind of. It was just a big setback because first of all, drawing is my favorite thing in the world. It's fun. It's uh, the thing that brings me the most enjoyment in my life. And to just have that taken away is really hard. And also, of course, I wanted to improve because my goal was to, when I graduated school, to jump right into working professionally. And I felt like there was no way in hell I was going to achieve that now because I couldn't draw and I couldn't improve. And, you know, I was fortunately able to achieve that anyway, but I know that I would probably be a better artist today if I hadn't had to go a year without barely drawing anything. Another thing is, during this time, I was really searching for any type of video or blog post or anything uh, that was made by an artist who was dealing with these same things. And I just couldn't find anything. I could find, like, um, I think one or two artists, like, mentioned it briefly that they had had a wrist issue at one point uh, in, like, interviews and stuff. But there was never any, like, oh, but now I'm fine, oh, but I did this, and now it's fine, and there was just nothing, nothing that could help me. And so I just felt very alone and hopeless. And um, that's really frustrating because there are a lot of solutions to this problem and there are a lot of people who deal with it. I just, at the time, I couldn't find anything. So it was just, just a really horrible time, basically. Until, like, uh, the winter of... 2016 I think so like the beginning of 2016 but at this point I had stopped seeing uh, the physiotherapist that my doctor referred me to a long time ago because his treatment just wasn't really helping in addition to the uh, heat treatment stuff he did also give me some exercises which kind of helped so so I stopped going to him but I did continue doing the exercises and I was experiencing some improvement but this was still something that I felt constantly. There was still like constantly pain in my arm, even when I was resting it. So this family friend who is also a doctor heard about my injury and she recommended that I go see a manual therapist instead of a physiotherapist. And a manual therapist is basically a physiotherapist who has had, I think it's an additional two years of education. Basically just, they're just like physiotherapists who are educated a bit further. So they have a lot more knowledge of uh, different muscles and different injuries and they are also they can offer a wider uh, variety of treatments so at the recommendation of this friend um, I started seeing a manual therapist and after like 10 minutes of examining me he had the answer for what was wrong with me uh, which is you know uh, obviously I can't know for sure that this is the, the correct diagnosis I guess but his is the only one that has made sense to me, and his treatment is the only thing that has really uh, worked for me. So what his theory was, uh, is that by sitting at my desk for long periods of time, usually with bad posture, with my arm like stretched out and moving, I was really putting a lot of strain on the muscles in my upper back to support my arm. 
and the muscles in my upper back were not very strong uh, at all. Uh, they were certainly not strong enough to support my arm. So since these were not strong enough, it was putting a lot of strain on my shoulder and on my wrist. And it was causing inflammation because it, they just didn't have enough support to do what they were doing. If that makes sense, the way I'm explaining it. And this really made sense to me uh, because the pain I've been feeling uh, kind of started out in my wrist, but then uh, it extended to my shoulder and elbow as well. So today I actually feel pain all the way from my fingertips to the right side of my neck. Because basically my back just wasn't able to support anything that was going on with my right arm. So basically, just like his theory that this was, uh, you know, an entire body problem uh, and not just a... Uh, a, a wrist issue was really uh, something that made sense to me. And I want to make it clear that just because this is the issue for me, uh, or it probably is the issue for me, no one knows for sure, but um, just because that's what I'm dealing with, that's not necessarily what you're dealing with yourself. Your issue could be entirely different. Wrist pain comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes. You could have t carpal tunnel, tennis elbow, just regular old tendonitis, or you could have something else entirely. So I really recommend, um, if you can afford it, and if you are able to, do see a doctor. I know I've been telling a lot of uh, bad stories about doctors right now, but if you're able to go to one and get an official diagnosis, and if you're also able to see a manual therapist, that's uh, something I really recommend. Because you, if you are feeling pain, you have to take it seriously. That's something I really want to stress. If you are feeling pain and strain in your wrist, don't just push through it and try to be tough. Uh, take a break and go see a professional so you can get a handle on it early on. This is not something to shrug off or just tough it out through. You have to take it seriously now or you are going to be seriously paying for it later. So anyway, he said that that was the problem and we started treatment accordingly. So what he did was, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound really horrible and it was really horrible, but it really helped. So what he did was, I don't know the, the medical term for it. I guess the closest thing would be acupuncture, but not really. What he basically did was he took these really long needles uh, thin, very bendable needles. I never really got a good look at them because I tried just to not look. Uh, <laughs> and he stuck them into my muscles and basically like dug around in there. Not gonna lie, it was really painful and it was really horrifying. <laughs> I would just like look in the other direction and pretend it wasn't happening. And he did this in like the muscles um, I don't know the word for them, but the muscles uh, at the start of my forearm and in the muscles uh, like at the back of my shoulder. So that's like the active part of the treatment. I would come in every two weeks or so and he would do that to uh, kind of loosen up my muscles and make sure that there was, uh, you know, plenty of blood flowing through and no like lingering tension. And then he also gave me a lot of strength exercises to do. He basically just wanted me to strengthen my back and my arms. And then he also encouraged me to do my own strength training on top of that, just to strengthen my entire body. So I was able to have better posture and uh, support myself. And so for like, I can't remember how long I was seeing him. I think maybe like one or two months, maybe two. And during that time I experienced a lot of improvement, unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. And I was able to start drawing again. No like crazy amounts because this was still while I was in school, so I didn't have that much time, but I was able to draw without excruciating pain and I was starting to feel normal again. So I had like a really long and hard battle trying to find a treatment that worked for me and trying to find a doctor who would take me seriously. And from what I've heard, that's kind of the experience of most other artists who have had some sort of serious wrist problem. Uh, it's really hard to get rid of and it's really hard to find a method of treatment that works for you. So 
I'm making this video kind of as like a, a, a place to start and then I encourage you to uh, seek out treatments on your own and seek out something that works for you because this is a really hard personal problem that uh, you know for some reason is just really hard to treat and really hard to deal with. I think part of the reason why uh, this was so hard for me to shake the first time around uh, is partly that I was just going around thinking, uh, oh, this is horrible, I'm never going to draw again, uh, everything, is everything is bad, everything sucks, um, and uh, my arm is ruined. And I think all of that was just making me feel, uh, kind of amplifying the pain. Uh, I think there was something to, you know, what that specialist told me about uh, about it being a psychological issue. That I think I probably partly was uh, tensing my arm and making everything worse. But, you know, current circumstances aside, uh, today I am fine. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I've been really, really stressed and really, really sad these past two weeks. As a reference, uh, this pain has been manageable for the past like two years, with an exception of like some periods where I had a lot of deadlines, like last summer when I did like a bunch of work for Blizzard uh, under short deadlines. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of painful, but apart from that, it hasn't been like super bad. It's been like kind of painful in some periods, but it's just, it's been fine. It's been manageable. So suddenly taking this big step back, especially like right after I launched my Patreon, I was going to like make more videos, make more art. I was really excited about making personal art. Uh, and then everything was just like stopped. That was really hard. Uh, and I just like, for the first week, I just like took a bunch of sadness naps and I just didn't really do anything. And I guess I was just wallowing, <laughs> feeling sorry for myself. Even though this is my own fault, this being this bad right now could have been avoided if I had just paced myself a bit more. And and I kind of feel like that's the key, that uh, if I had paced myself, this would not have happened. Because I am in control of how this affects me. You know, uh, this is like a shitty thing to have, obviously. It slows you down a little, and it's painful, and it's annoying, and it sucks. But uh, there are a lot of tools you can use to make it completely manageable and completely, you know, livable. Uh, I had all those tools, and I still uh, fucked up because I got arrogant and I thought I was, I thought I was fine. I thought I was over it. And so now I'm kind of just on the path of. Uh, I'm resting and I'm also exercising a lot. Uh, not too much because I don't want to like strain my wrists through exercise too, but this is just a tiny, a tiny pause in my, uh, in my career, I guess. This is going to be completely fine. At least that's what I am trying to tell myself. Obviously being forced to not work, especially when you're a freelancer um, and you're not making any money is really stressful. Uh, that does really stress me, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I have a lot of anxiety about like how long I'm going to be out. Uh, I don't want to get on welfare um, <laughs> because that's a big fucking process too. But I'm just trying not to think about it and trying to uh, take it day by day and just doing what I know helps. And so I've now been talking about this for a good hour. My voice is starting to give out and I haven't even gotten to what I wanted to talk about, which is things you can do to either prevent this or uh, to, to improve it, basically. So first of all, if you are not, if you have not experienced this, what can you do to make sure that you will never experience it? Uh, well, first of all, the most important thing in the world is taking breaks. 
take breaks at least once an hour and just get up and move around, do some stretches, you know, move your arms around in circles, uh, do some shoulder rolls, you know, whatever. Just make sure you get some blood flowing back in your body and make sure you give your arm a chance to just rest a little bit. So you make sure not to overwork it. Don't try to like sit and work for four hours because you think that's what you need to do to be like a professional. That's just really stupid. I know there's this uh, mentality in the professional art community and I feel like it's starting to like subside a little bit. I feel like it's starting to change, but it's there's still this thing of like, oh, you gotta work so hard, you gotta work 12 hours a day and work yourself to death or you'll never be successful. Ugh. It's just like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> You don't have to do that. You don't have to kill yourself working. Taking breaks and uh, working at an okay pace is the only way you're going to be able to do this for your entire life. I don't care if your favorite artist told you that they work for four hours without a break. Uh, that doesn't mean they necessarily even do it. It could just be, you know, a lie. And it also doesn't mean that you have to do that. Take breaks. Take it easy. Uh, if you can, uh, don't work for 10 hours a day. Uh, you know, if you're able to only draw for like four hours a day, that's great. It's not always about the more the better. If you are able to do everything you need to do in four hours, awesome. Uh, your wrist is going to be thankful. <laughs> uh, and there's nothing to be ashamed of by working less. It's not like the more you work, the better an artist you are innately. That's just false. I know, I feel like I said I say this so much, but just take care of yourself. Take breaks, uh, taking breaks every 25 minutes, nothing wrong with it, as long as you don't take like a 30 minute break. <laughs> it's fine. Um, whatever you need to do to uh, keep yourself healthy is the best thing to do. And that goes to my next point, which is rest. Uh, this is more if you are already feeling some pain or if you're feeling really bad pain, like I am right now, you need to just let everything go, if you can, and just rest completely. If you haven't had like an official diagnosis and you're working on a big project and you feel more pain than you usually do, please just like drop everything. If you're not under contract, tell the client that, hey, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to need an additional week to finish this and just take some time to let your wrist rest. Because ignoring that pain and just pushing through it is a surefire way to get yourself injured later on. It, it might feel like the right thing to do in the moment, but it's going to hurt you later on. And this especially goes if you are feeling like super bad pain and you're having a flare-up or, or maybe you're, you've gotten this for the first time, maybe you've just been diagnosed with wrist tendonitis, you should really take a break for a long time, as long as you can. Basically, until your wrist stops hurting really bad and until it stops hurting every time you pick up a pencil, just stop, just stop doing everything. And um, I know that sucks, especially if you're a professional and you rely on this for your income. This is why it's really important to have a lot of savings when you're a freelancer. Uh, because things like this can happen anytime and you really want to be prepared for it. So uh, just take a break for as long as you possibly can. For me right now, I've been taking a break for like exactly 15 days. And the pain has gotten better, uh, definitely, but it's still very much there. Uh, it's still a lot worse than it should be. So uh, even though it's literally agonizing, I'm just going to keep, keep resting until I'm forced to go back to work. Because the thing is, if you don't take this seriously and rest now, uh, you're going to be forced to retire when you're like 30. I know it feels like a step back, but really uh, you're just doing yourself a favor by taking it easy. You're basically ensuring that you're going to be able to do this for a long time by taking your body seriously when it sends you these signals. So breaks, very important. Rest if you do feel pain 
And uh, the third thing, which is another super important thing, is exercise. Having like a nice strong back and arms, uh, and obviously you want to train your legs too, so you don't end up looking weird, but having like a nice strong muscle foundation, you know, it's going to make your entire life easier, but it's going to make your your body way more, I guess, way more resistant to like uh, the typical pains you get on a desk job, you know, because we, we spend a lot, a lot of time sitting and... Um, you know, going that extra mile and doing like an, an hour of exercise after work will just make sure that you don't end up getting some horrible like back or wrist injury later on. I think everyone knows that exercise is super important and you don't even need to do like, you don't need to spend two hours at the gym every day. You can do like some simple exercises for half an hour, three times a week. That's way better than nothing. It, one time, one day a week still better than nothing. If that's all you can manage right now, just do it. And if you feel like you're too busy to work out, um, I know it's easy to feel that way when you have deadlines and uh, when everything is just going really fast, you feel like you can't possibly like put down the pen and go do something else for half an hour to an hour, but it's just very important to just take your body seriously and it's going to improve all the other aspects of real life as well. It's going to make your mood, mood better, it's going to improve your discipline, it's going to make your body feel better, feel less tense, less painful, everything. And uh, obviously if you are already experiencing pain, don't just go like jump in with a super uh, hard weight training regime. Uh, the best thing is to get exercises from your uh, physiotherapist, your doctor, whatever, uh, that are specifically tailored to you and your issues. So also if exercise, if a certain exercise hurts your wrist or whatever, don't do it or modify it. No need, uh, just like all the other things I've been saying in this video. If you feel pain, don't try to be a tough guy and push through it. It's only going to hurt you more in the long run. So take breaks, rest and exercise. So those are the, the most important things you can do for your wrist health. And also you want to be sitting with good posture. Uh, if you have a standing desk or a sit-stand desk, you know, do a bit of standing every day too, if you, <laughs> if you can. That's a good way to make sure that your back isn't like super crunched up. I know I like, when I sit down to work, I, I start out sitting with a straight back and uh, you know, my arms aligned well with my desk and everything, but then 30 minutes after I start painting, I'll just like snap out of my focus and realize I'm sitting like L from Death Note again. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's the reason my back is also fucked up, <laughs> but that's a video for another day. So just like if you, if you are having these issues, don't feel alone, don't feel hopeless, just like Take it one day at a time and, and do your exercises and, and take care of yourself. Listen to your body, you know, um, and it will thank you. If you do these things, you will see improvements. Oh, so actually another thing that can help you with the pain is, um, well, first of all, pain relief creams, I guess you would call it. Uh, you know, instead of taking a painkiller uh, in a pill form, you can you can put it directly on your arm and it will work a lot better. Uh, so the one I'm using is called Voltarol and it's uh, like one of the strongest ones you can get uh, at the pharmacy just over the counter. No idea if that's like a thing you have in the rest of the world, uh, but that's worked really well for me. Uh, it's It just takes like the worst pain uh, and it, it lets you not be in agony in everyday life. <laughs> And then I also, I use sports tape to uh, to tape my wrist and then I also like to put a piece of tape above my elbow. That's like where my uh, manual therapist told me I should place it and it helps a lot. And then I also, sometimes I'll use it on top of the sports tape, sometimes I'll use it without the sports tape. I also have this uh, wrist brace that supports my wrist and my thumb. Because I, I feel a lot of pain in my thumb too, uh, and in my fingers. 
it's not like a necessity, but it just gives you some extra support, and um, I feel like it's helping. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then, you know, there's a bunch of other things you can do, like you can uh, dunk your hand in a bucket of ice and then dunk it in a bucket of warm water, water and just like go back and forth, uh, which will make your muscles expand and shrink. Uh, which will improve blood flow and, you know, if you have any, like, tightness in your tendons uh, which is causing the pain, that will, like, release. So you can also do, like, hot-cold treatment in other ways, like, if you take a shower, uh, make your water really cold and then really warm and then really cold, you know. And then, you know, if you have a bathtub, taking a, a really warm bath can really help lessen some of the pain, too. And those are all things that help, but but like the bucket thing for example is something that I found through just like a lot of research online and I did it like twice and it, I guess it like kind of took away some of the tension but it didn't really help that much uh, you know the, the best thing uh, is just like the tried and true exercise and rest that's like the ultimate solution for me at least uh, your injury might work a little differently so I, I encourage you to try anything that's not like harmful so yeah that is about everything i had to say i think so if you've experienced this stuff yourself and you have some tips you want to share i really encourage you to leave a comment and just like i just feel like we need to talk about this more because it happens to so many of us and then there's like no not really that much to find about it. I've seen a few artists tweet about it recently, but it's... I don't know, I just think it would be easier for all of us if we felt a little less alone in this. So, uh, you know, uh, as always, help each other out in the comments. That's awesome. And, um, and uh, yeah, I feel like that's, that's it. <laughs> So if you enjoyed this video and if you want to uh, support me making more, if you want to support me during this time I can't work, uh, please consider checking out my Patreon. It's going to be a while until the next like rewards package because obviously I can't draw, but if you want to join our community Discord or you just want to see some of the old behind the scenes stuff, uh, I'm going to leave the link in the description if you are interested and um, yeah, I hope this was helpful or at least, you know, made you feel a bit more hopeful uh, if you're dealing with this yourself. So I'm probably not going to make any more videos for a while. I have one that's like in progress, but to finish it I need to do like another five hours of drawing and that's just not gonna happen right now. So we'll see. I'll let everyone know on social media once I'm ready to go back to work, I guess, but uh, for now I guess I'm on hiatus, so if I'm being a bit silent that's just because I, I don't have anything to show. <laughs> Thank you for watching and listening to this really long video. Um, I'll see you soon, hopefully. Uh, bye.